Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make crystal videos, small business videos, manifestation videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos just about every week. Today is a video about something I've wanted to talk about for a long time, which is the difference between Chalcedony, Agate, and Jasper. If you're at all familiar with the crystal world, I'm sure you have heard these terms before. If you collect crystals, you definitely have these in your collection. These terms encompass a huge group of different crystals that we see on the market. Because these terms are so similar by definition, it leads to a lot of confusing and mislabeling. So I think it's important to clarify what these terms mean and how to differentiate between them. So today we're only talking about the geology of these different terms and nothing about the spiritual properties of these crystals. If there's any crystal I mentioned in this video that you would like me to do a deep dive into where we do get into the spiritual properties, be sure to comment down below because I'm going to be mentioning a lot of different crystals and I'd be happy to do a video on any of them but today we're just talking about definitions of these terms and the geology. I feel like it's really important to clarify these terms so that people are able to learn how to properly identify and label their crystals and to just prevent further mislabeling on the market. So agates, jaspers, and chalcedony are all quartz based crystals and if you look up the definition of one you'll simply see that it's a micro crystalline variety of quartz and if they're all micro crystalline varieties of quartz, then what is the difference and why do they have different names? So chalcedony, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I've heard different things. That's what I've been saying in my head for the past few years, so we're going with it. If you say it differently, that's fine. But chalcedony is the general kind of umbrella term for micro crystalline varieties of quartz. This includes agates and jaspers. So these terms can't be used interchangeably, but something can be an agate and a chalcedony. But just because something's a chalcedony doesn't mean it's an agate. You know what I'm saying? It has the umbrella term of chalcedony and agate and jasper fall underneath that. Blue chalcedony is a example of a chalcedony that is not an agate or a jasper, just chalcedony. An example of something that would fall under two categories is carnelian, which is an agate, therefore it is also a chalcedony. So microcrystalline means that the crystal grains are so small that you would need a microscope to see them. So if you've ever looked at any flower agate, carnelian, ocean jasper, you can tell that there are not visible large grains. So even though chalcedony is microcrystalline quartz, there is a difference between these terms of agate, jasper, and chalcedony, and just quartz. A lot of crystals are quartz-based without being classified as quartz. When fractured and broken, quartz will have a glassy luster, whereas chalcedony will have more of a dull luster due to its crystallization. So that's what it looks like if you break it open. If you know if you've ever broken a clear quartz or a rose quartz, it's very glassy looking. These other crystals that we're talking about will not look the same on the inside. So the best way to differentiate between all of these different varieties of microcrystalline quartz is based on how much light is let through the crystal. So that ranges from transparent to opaque. Clear quartz would be something that is transparent. You can totally see through it. Red jasper is an example of the other end of the spectrum, which is opaque, meaning light is not let through it. You can't see any light through it if you held it up to the sun. Chalcedony is semi-transparent to translucent. Translucent means that some light is let through, but it isn't entirely see-through. So you can see light through it, but you can't see like shapes. Carnelian is a great example of a translucent chalcedony because if you've ever held carnelian up to the sun, you can tell that it glows in the sun. A lot of light is let through, but it's not see-through. So as we discussed, chalcedony is the umbrella term that includes the terms agate and jasper. So some examples of crystals you may see that fall under just the chalcedony category would be blue chalcedony, chrysoprase, and purple chalcedony. And purple chalcedony is also known as grape agate. Grape agate is an example of a botryoidal chalcedony. I hope I'm saying that right. I should have looked it up. So botryoidal means it has a round crystal formation and grape agate is the perfect example of this. But not all crystals that form in this botryoidal pattern are chalcedony. There are other minerals that form botryoidally and a good example of those are prehnite and hematite. They can both form in this way. And as I will mention later, the term grape agate is not actually 
technically correct. That is mislabeling and a better term for it would be purple chalcedony. So moving on to the first term that falls under the umbrella of chalcedony, which is agates. Agate is semi-transparent to translucent and is identified by its unique banding. They may or may not have visible banding, but most varieties of agate you will see this feature. Agates are very, very often dyed or heated to enhance their color. I think dyed agate is probably one of the most common dyed crystals that we've all seen. These dyed crystals will come in really unnatural shades of like pink, purple, or blue. They're usually found in slices or tumbles and they're very, very cheap. Carnelian is an example of an agate and carnelian is actually very often heated. A lot of the carnelian on the market is heated to enhance its reddish orange color. It is often more naturally on the brown side, so it is heated to have a more desirable color, but carnelian is an agate. It may or may not have this visible banding. I'll show you an example of some beautiful pieces that do have banding. Flower agate and moss agate are two other varieties of agate that you probably recognize from seeing out in the crystal world. They may or may not have this visible banding within them, but they are still agates. So to make things a little bit more confusing, there is also onyx. And onyx is a variety of microcrystalline quartz, which is identified by its very parallel and straight banding. Onyx is typically known to be black, but can also be black and white, white in mostly shades of brown. It doesn't really seem to come in any crazy interesting colors. Unfortunately, it seems like a lot of the black onyx on the market is dyed. If you see super contrasty black and white banded agate or black sardonyx, this is probably dyed. But Onyx is known for its very parallel straight banding and kind of boring colors, kind of a very neutral stripey stone. Onyx is very often mistaken for banded calcite on the market, but that's a discussion for another day. Just know this is what Onyx look like. I'll include some examples. Now Sardonyx is a variety of Onyx that is red with alternating layers of sard and onyx, meaning making it sardonyx. So sard is actually a reddish brown variety of chalcedony and is often interchangeably used with the term carnelian. Sard is more on the brown side, whereas carnelian is typically red to orange, but there's no distinct line that separates this sard and carnelian. So sometimes they are used interchangeably. It's not a huge difference, just slight color variations. So while, while onyx is identified by its parallel and straight banding, if you've ever seen sardonyx, you know it is anything but straight parallel banding. I think sardonyx has some of the craziest banding and patterns that I've ever seen. So I wouldn't use this very much as an identifying feature between agate and onyx, but honestly I don't see many crystals out there that are mistaken as onyx instead of agate. Everything seems to be pretty well labeled on that front. I just wanted to throw in these onyx and sardonyx definitions because they are also microcrystalline varieties of quartz and they do have that banding which makes them very similar to agate. So some more examples of agate are carnelian agate, Botswana agate, iris agate, flower agate, moss agate, and crazy lace agate. Now on to the other category that falls under the chalcedony term, which is jaspers. Jaspers stand out from these other microcrystalline quartzes because they are typically completely opaque. They can sometimes be semi-translucent, meaning a little bit of light is let through, but most jaspers you'll see are pretty opaque. There is no light coming through these. Like I mentioned, a good example is red jasper. It definitely doesn't have the same translucency that something like flower agate would. Jaspers are typically seen in reds and browns, more neutral colors. Jaspers are not one specific mineral. They typically have many impurities, giving it all these different colors and patterns. So it is classified as just a rock, not a mineral. I feel like a lot of the times the term Jasper is kind of just thrown onto things if you don't really know what it is. And I feel like that leads to a lot of mislabeling. So there's a lot of crystals out there that are called some sort of Jasper when it's not actually a Jasper. Because remember, to be a Jasper, it has to be quartz-based. So some examples of true jaspers that you probably recognize are mookite, polychrome jasper, ocean jasper, red jasper, yellow jasper, zebra jasper. So moral of the story, the best way to determine the difference between chalcedonies, 
agates and jaspers is based on how much light is let through them and if they have identifying features such as banding. Remember that agates are semi-transparent to translucent, meaning there is light let through them, whereas jaspers are opaque, so no light is let through them. Both of these terms could be called chalcedony, so if you're unsure if something is an agate, a jasper, a chalcedony, chalcedony is a safe term to use because it encompasses all of these things. So now let me bring up a couple of crystals I've seen on the market that are mislabeled within these categories. The first being what I mentioned, grape agate is not truly an agate. It is actually a chalcedony. The best name for grape agate would actually be purple betroidal chalcedony. The more I say the word chalcedony, the more I feel like I'm saying it wrong. It's too late now. Another mislabeling is Dalmatian Jasper. It is actually not a Jasper at all. It is a igneous rock composed of mostly feldspar and quartz. So even though it has quartz in it, it also has a lot of feldspar and other minerals within it, which means it's not a microcrystalline variety of quartz. It's just an igneous rock. Similarly, Kiwi Jasper is not a Jasper. It is composed of tourmaline, amazonite, and quartz. It is another igneous rock. Bumblebee Jasper, also not a Jasper. Bumblebee Jasper is actually composed mostly of limestone and calcite. It has no quartz in it at all. So that's all I have for today's little mini crystal chat. I just wanted to go over some of these definitions because the terms chalcedony, agate, jasper are thrown around a lot in the crystal world and they can often be mislabeled or used interchangeably when they shouldn't be. So I just wanted to clear up what the definitions of these different terms are so you know what you're looking at and you know how to properly identify these crystals. Again, be sure to let me know if you want me to do a deep dive on any of these crystals that I mentioned where I go more in depth about their specific geology and spiritual properties. I know this video was very geology heavy, but most of my crystal chats do include the spiritual metaphysical properties of crystals as well, and all the different varieties and how to tell fakes or not. So if you're interested in that kind of content, be sure to subscribe. I do have some crystal chats out already about amethyst, citrine, and thulite, and I have more on the way. So be sure to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I put out a new one every single week, and don't forget that I have a crystal shop if you would like to purchase some agates, jaspers, and chalcedonies. I have some available in my shop, cosmicgeology.com. You can use code YouTube at checkout for a discount. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.